you may say this is quite a interesting title which I have created for today, Monday the 18th of July 2022. Free Gorges Dam is not earthquake proof. Here is the evidence. About two years ago, a hydrologist, a engineer, uh, a Chinese-German or German-Chinese person called uh, Mr. Wang basically did this article on the news related to why it's not earthquake proof and basically right now I'm going to not do any dilly-dallying but before I have got a strange feeling that the powers to be will not allow advertisements so if you do want to support the Tokyo cat food then the super thanks button would be wonderful here is Dr. Wang. Certain magnitude, the Three Gorges Dam and Water Reservoir could suffer a devastating blow. As we mentioned, a study on the Three Gorges Dam was conducted and claimed the dam is safe. Let's see how it was done. It said a magnitude 6.5 earthquake is likely, but will not happen at the dam site, but most likely to be about 10 and a half miles away from the site. Then, since the strength of the seismic waves weakens as it travels toward the site of the dam, it would no longer be measured on a magnitude scale, but by seismic intensity, meaning the level of destruction. They measured this as 6 out of 12. The Three Gorges Dam is said to be designed to protect against level 7 intensity, but has actually been designed for level 8 intensity. That's why the Three Gorges Dam is considered safe. However, if the dam brings out a magnitude 6 or 6.5 earthquake, all buildings within the reservoir region would not be earthquake proof. Residential houses would be unsafe. Residents would be unsafe. That's why we say that lives are of greatest concern. We worry about the Three Gorges Dam, of course, because we worry about the safety of residents living downstream of the dam. It's the same when it comes to earthquakes. The Three Gorges Reservoir region is not earthquake proof. Why aren't the houses in the area earthquake proof? There is a person who does work with earthquakes in China who said that, for the sake of saving money, China has designated the severity of many earthquakes as much lower. Like in Wenchuan, the epicenter was previously designated as a 6 on the China seismic intensity scale. There weren't precautions set up, and it came in waves, so when it reached 10 or 11, the losses were really... Now, this is going to be quite a long video, and we do have some more information with Dr. Wang a little bit later on. Now, you may remember also the weather forecast from a couple of days ago where there were some, it was predicted, the weather forecast said there were going to be some thunder. Well, I can't confirm, but here is a picture of the thunder around the Free Gorsed Reservoir area. And with that, let's take a quick break and then we'll go into recent this month's pictures of the Free Gorges Dam. And welcome back. Now, we have talked about the CCP Shills and there is one, I'm not too sure where he lives, but he was sponsored by Ai Chongqing. Ai Chongqing is the tourism authority of Chongqing. 600 kilometers away from the Three Gorges and this gentleman decided to go on a river cruise I think it was from Chongqing all the way to maybe Yingchang or Wuhan not too sure about the destination but he did film the elevator the ship's locks this month so this is the latest you can see right now <music>
The Belt and Road Initiative in China is meant to be a development idea of bringing trade together and in theory I presume it would work but the thing is we can never trust China because they always go back on their promises. You can say every single international thing they did or they said they won't do they eventually do. They have been building dams around the world and Pakistan is the latest victim of the TOEFL dams when this dam in Pakistan built by the Chinese decided to well, not work so well. Now back to Dr. Wang from Germany, Chinese German gentleman who's an expert on the free gorgeous dam. He's an expert on dams. This time talking about what would happen if the free gorgeous dam collapsed one way or the other by a missile, by overspilling, etc., etc. Have a look at this. This is part two. And it's for the three gorges. There are many flashy claims in it, or what China calls golden words. One of them is the Three Gorges Dam is not afraid of atomic bombing. Even if an atomic bomb goes off, it would only cause a few ruptures, as if several sluice gates were opened. However, studies on the feasibility of the Three Gorges project shows that if an atomic bomb hit the Three Gorges Dam, there would be breaches 200 meters, 400 meters, 700 meters, 1,000 meters, or even all the way to the foundation of the dam. Some time ago, we saw some videos online about the potential flooding downstream in the city of Yichang and even Wuhan after the dam breaks. What were the numbers, such as the flooding after a dam break? What were its assumptions? That's all from the feasibility report by the Three Gorges Project. These numbers are all credible. This report was conducted by the Yangtze River Water Resources Commission, which included all the designs and reasoning for those designs, a series of more than 10 books. In the books, I'm sure you'll find the modeling of the collapse of the dam. So those Chinese experts believed that the risks of the dam collapsing are realistic. That explains why they included them in the study. Is that so? In your opinion, if the dangers were only imaginary or not so high, do you think they would include them in the report? At the time, both the supporters and the opposition acknowledged the dangers. If in a wartime scenario, the dam is doomed to collapse. A body of researchers led by General Zhang Aiping drew those conclusions after years of research and studies on models. Yesterday, I did a video related to Henan, Henan province, related to the banking, and a lot of people have decided to stop paying their mortgages on their housing because their housing is just not being built, and it's always a bunch of lies after lie after lie. But this is the return from the Chinese government on state media and saying everything is all hunky-dory. China's financial market, young and fast growing, is opening up further to the global markets, building on the transformative steps it has taken in the past decade. The country's equity market and bond market have expanded 238.9% and 444.3% over the past 10 years, now both the second largest worldwide. The financial market has sharpened its appeal to global investors, through reforms to render a market-oriented and rules-based environment. But you can see the actual reality right here that these buildings are partially built and then they've stopped building. People have put their life savings into it through a mortgage, through the bank. The 
construction company gets the money and we're not too sure what happens to it. Even one of the tallest buildings very near Beijing, the top of it is not being completed. So what I thought I'd do is that I'll put the audio onto what's really happening in China. Let's just do it and you'll, it will make sense, trust me. China's financial market, young and fast growing, is opening up further to the global markets, building on the transformative steps it has taken in the past decade. The country's equity market and bond market have expanded 238.9% and 444.3% over the past 10 years, now both the second largest worldwide. The financial market has sharpened its appeal to global investors, through reforms to render a market-oriented and rules-based environment. When we look at our... Uh... One more item to go, and this is related to the digital currency in China. They're trying to centralize a digital currency, so China eventually, it never will be a cashless society, but everything is monitored by a credit score system. Now, what would happen if this would happen in America, for example, that you don't use cash anymore and everything you do is on mobile banking using QR codes, barcodes, etc. I use it quite often here, but it's always necessary to have a little bit of cash with you. This is a very wonderful, beautiful girl talking about it to make you understand possibly a bit more. This is because we're moving towards a social credit score system. This means you will receive either a number or a score. So if you say the wrong thing, like the wrong thing on social media, or don't do as you're told, like take the magic medicine, your score will go lower. And people with low scores won't be allowed to purchase certain items. This is all possible with a central bank digital currency. A programmable cryptocurrency that is entirely in the control of your government. So when your social credit score falls too low, your money will be programmed to be used against you. Central bank digital currencies allow for an unprecedented amount of control, discrimination and coercion. Your money is about to be rejected. And that brings us to a close on Monday, the 18th of July, 2022. Yes, rather a long video. I apologize for that. Maybe you needed two cups of coffee for it. The courtesy messages of liking would be excellent to subscribe if you haven't done so and to resubscribe if that subscription is not there anymore. As I said at the beginning, most possibly this is not going to be um, allowed any certain things that will pay my bills. So if you are feeling generous and you want to support Tokyo's cat food fund, then the super thanks is somewhere below in most countries. Have a most epic day wherever you are and I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.